Is Jesus in the background of your life, or does he mean everything to you? Next, here on The Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I have today Becky McKinney, and I appreciate you so much coming and sharing this story. And Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's fascinating what kind of things you brought up as we've talked about things. And so, but as we usually do, where were you born and what's your background a little bit? I was born in Ogden. Okay. Uh, my family moved to Roy when I was eight. Okay. And I pretty much Which grew is up a there. suburb of suburb Ogden. Ogden. For yep. those that don't know. Yep, still live there. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. all these years, huh? Yep. We You've moved to Layton for a little seen while. Seen a change a while, a, a bit, a bunch, have Big one. Bunch of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And family? You had some brothers? Did yeah, you? I have two younger brothers. Okay. Yeah, I was the oldest. Yeah. Born in the covenant, as mm -hmm. they say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Parents were married in the Logan Temple in 1965. <laughs> were they? Mm -hmm. And so just regular church attendance and all that kind of stuff as a young person? And, yeah, until shortly after my baptism, my parents became inactive. Oh. So my growing up years weren't really um, real active. I would go with friends and things when I wanted to feel really? included and things like that. Well, you mentioned you did road shows and did that kind of stuff, uh, mutual. Yeah, yeah. So stuff. and and my parents still had my younger brothers baptized and everything, but yeah. just weren't active. Okay. Um, anything uh, unusual happened during those formative years then? Or do you do just mm. kind of? Went through Not life really, and high just, school and all that yep, stuff. <laughs> yep. Okay. What <laughs> happens after high school? Uh, I got married right out of high school. Did you? To my first husband. Yep. Yep. And uh, we were only married two and a half years. Oh. We had a son. Okay. Um, we were sealed in the temple on our first anniversary. Okay. So, and that was an experience in itself. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that for a minute because you mentioned a couple of things that were interesting. And this was yeah. back before 1990. Mm -hmm. It was in so 1985. So, we still had the. The blood mm -hmm. oaths and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, which really made me nauseous. I wanted to leave. I wanted to get up and run out. Did you really? I, and I, I just kept thinking, this. there's no way this is from God. Just didn't but I feel stayed, that. you yeah. know, here's your, here's your husband and your in-laws and your grandparents. And so I stayed. Yeah, but just, I didn't. It would be pretty hard to get up and walk out, mm -hmm. especially when you're going through to... Mm -hmm. To get sealed and, and everything. Yep. Yep. Uh, what anything else did you think about that bothered you? Uh, initiatory temple? bothered me. Yeah. Nobody warned me what was going to happen, so I kind of felt violated. Yeah. Didn't enjoy that at all. So unusual, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I never did initiatory again. Didn't you? When I would go through and do <laughs> sessions, we just did the endowment sessions. Just the endowment never did session. it again. Okay. <laughs> You know, it's funny, I've, as we've talked with others, too, um, about the Kirtland Temple, you know, being built, and there was nothing mm -hmm. about this kind of stuff. And then when Joseph Smith went through the masonry process and yeah. became a mason, then in the Nauvoo Temple, he initiated all this yeah. other stuff. We didn't know about that too much as right. good members. Did you nope. know about that? No, nope. <laughs> I found that out recent, yeah. recent years. <laughs> Since leaving, yeah. I found yeah. out a lot of things. Yeah, so... So you, you, are you active then now with your uh, husband? And I mean, you're. Um, you mean my first son. husband? Yeah, so yeah, we son. were, um, yeah. and then we ended up divorced. And after that yeah. point, I was busy working, going to school, raising my son. Was inactive. It was not. The activity was more for him okay. than for me. Now you mentioned t uh, that you always wanted a testimony, mm -hmm. and you felt kind of. You know, mm -hmm. Envious or whatever of those mm -hmm. that could stand up and bear their testimonies. Was yeah. that during this time? Or was no, that, that was actually after I married my second husband and we were sealed in the temple okay. and had our our three children together sealed to us. Yeah. And uh, I wanted that testimony so bad. I was so <laughs> jealous of these people. They were so they seemed so sure of what they so believed. So confident in their. Yeah. I know the church is true, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and I just felt like I must be really a horrible person, <laughs> and God just doesn't love me enough to give me that testimony. Isn't that interesting that you would put the blame on yourself yep. that, that you weren't getting a testimony? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought I just wasn't trying hard enough, doing good enough. So yeah. what happens after this? Uh, so my husband and I and our children, we were active for about 10 years, 
trying to get the testimony, doing everything <laughs> we were supposed to do, thinking it would come. And um, there was just, I always had a hard time believing it. I always was real skeptical of Joseph Smith. And a lot of things just didn't seem right to me. And so I just struggled. So finally I just said, you know what, we're just going to be good people. That's all that matters. We believe in God. We'll be fine. And that's where we were for about another 10 years. <laughs> well, you mentioned you didn't like tithing settlement. You no. thought that was kind of something between you and God. Yeah. And the word of wisdom. Tell us about yeah. that. What you it thought. just never made any sense to me. And, you know, Jesus' first miracle was turning water into wine. So I didn't understand how it's okay then and not okay now. For God to... Yeah. Not that I even to, really like alcohol. Right. I don't. But here Jesus but, is making wine. Yeah. And if it's against the word of wisdom, why was he doing yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So just things like that <laughs> just bothered me. <laughs> and then, of course, again, the temple. Mm -hmm. that was, yeah. yeah, because when I went through, when Michael and I went through and were sealed, I noticed that they'd taken out the blood oaths and they oh, changed after things. after 1990. Mm -hmm. How did and that so strike you? That bothered me because I was like... If this is so important and if this is from God and he's unchangeable, how can that change? So that was one of the one thing that really, really bothered me. And then, you know, I noticed again, I guess later on in the story, after <laughs> Michael and I decided to go back um, before our daughter got married. Okay. And so when we went through the temple again, I noticed more changes. Mm -hmm. And that that set everything into motion. Why do you think the LDS people don't catch any of this stuff why, why does it take us i think they do i think they just put it on their shelf they just like we figure it doesn't like matter for sure. and they just yeah just like, put it away because they don't want or to I'll understand it later or mm -hmm. it'll get explained later yeah, or something i think so yeah I think that's what happens so you do go inactive for a while and mm -hmm. then your daughter's going to get married mm -hmm. yeah so tell us that story so um We'll back up just a little bit. So our oldest son had gotten married in the temple, okay. and we waited outside. And oh. I thought it was going to be okay, but it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. But we got through it. <laughs> temple worthy, as they say. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I didn't want to go back just because of him. I needed to believe it, and I knew I didn't. Right. And so um, when it came time for our daughter, she was getting engaged to a young man that was about to leave on his mission, which is kind of against the rules, but they didn't care. <laughs> Oh. And uh, before he left, they asked us if we would consider going back to church so we could be with them in the temple. Your daughter did that. Mm -hmm. so, um, our daughter and our future sweet. son in law. That's sweet. And, uh, and you committed to that? Well, not really. We kind of were unsure about it. Yeah. Um, but I knew how hard it had been missing out on our oldest son's wedding. <laughs> yeah. So. I didn't really want to go through that again, <laughs> but I knew I needed oh, to believe yeah. it, though, yeah. and I needed to know, finally, once and for all, if it was true, because I couldn't just go back again and be active again, and I knew what would happen, because it was just this roller coaster my whole life, in and out of activity. So yeah. it was finally this point where I just had to know, once and for all, if it was true. So that's what started everything. <laughs> And uh, so I started reading the Book of Mormon again, praying, asking God, like, just tell me if the Book of Mormon is true. And he was completely silent. And I did this for months. And finally, I just changed my prayer. And I asked him to just show me his truth. Wow, that's a big step. Yeah. What made you, what prompted I you to do that? I can't tell you. I don't know. I just needed truth. And so I just asked him. And... The very next day, I ran on to Michael Wilder's Unveiling Grace video, <laughs> and he talks in there about reading the Bible like a child. Yeah. And I had tried to read the Bible in the past and just got bored, started in Genesis, and just like, oh, it's so boring, and I don't understand it. But this time, I started in the Book of John. Wow. And it changed my entire life. Well, let me kind of emphasize that. You're saying you prayed this one day, okay, God, I'm turning this over to you. You give me your mm -hmm. truth. The very next day... Now how does what happened? Did it just come I, in the mail or No, I was on the internet. I don't I think it was just on one of the little side things when you're watching something on yeah. YouTube and stuff will come up and I just clicked on it. What did you think? I was fascinated by his story. Yeah. My son in law was on his mission at that time and so this really struck a chord with me. I even had my daughter watch it with me and she did. 
Yeah. She watched it. Mm -hmm. But uh, that got me reading the Bible. And that's when everything changed. He just grabbed a hold of my heart and... Well, it's never, <laughs> I've never been the same. <laughs> never, never. There's no going back from that one. <laughs> So you still had a dilemma. Mm -hmm. You still had a, we a daughter's wedding coming up. Yep, and oh. I was very conflicted. Yeah. Because I was determined I was going to be with her, and I didn't see what would be so bad with just standing in that room and watching them be sailed. Yeah. But the more I got to know God, the more I knew that's I can't do that. It's hypocritical. It's blasphemous to Him. I can't. I can't do it. But I still my. Mom heart? My heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I wanted to uh, <laughs> be with my baby. And so I struggled with that for a long time. So um, uh, there was a period of about nine months there while our son-in-law was gone that we were um, going to LDS church with our daughter and then we would go to Christian church because... I'd been saved, I just didn't realize at that point I hadn't given him everything. I'd held out this one little part of me, mm -hmm. this little part that wanted to be in control and be with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we did that for about nine months and, and um, I did a lot of praying and asking him. It's just like, what do I do? Is it really so bad to just stand there and watch her be sealed? <laughs> um, that I was so conflicted because I, I knew, I just didn't want to admit it yeah. deep down inside. But and then I had an encounter with the Spirit that just Well, you were just kind of everything. getting out of the shower, as it were, or something. Yeah, I was Tell drying my hair. <laughs> and I just felt this presence, this overwhelming love. I, I can't even describe it. It does. I can't put it into words because it won't yeah. do it justice. But... I just felt so loved, but I also heard in my head, you already know what to do. Wow. And I did. And so I just, I dropped to my knees and I just sobbed. For two hours I sobbed. Wow. And just saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Wow. And it was at that moment that I gave the rest of myself to him. Wow. And I knew I wouldn't be in the temple with her. Yeah. <laughs> And it was still hard, so, I'm sure, but... It was very hard yeah. because, uh, I mean, we had valid recommends. We could have gone in. Our daughter kind of knew we'd been thinking things through, our son-in-law, but pretty much a lot of other people didn't really know. Yeah. But it just Did anybody right. ever ask you what you were learning and what you'd come across? No. I, I had a talk with my best friend, and... And she tried to help me, like, figure things out, but... She's LDS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? She loves me anyway, and I love her anyway. Well, we don't nice. let it come between <laughs> us. We've been friends since we were in seventh grade. Oh. Well, so that's, that's special. And she's awesome, and I look I look up yeah. to her because she is an amazing, amazing woman. Mm -hmm. So well, that's neat. Um, well, so that must have been... Was your daughter disappointed, I guess? I think she, she was. Yeah. I sat her down and told her and kind of explained. I remember one time Michael and I went and had a talk with her and just told her that we didn't believe and told her the reasons why. Um, but we also told her she has to make her own choices sure. in life. And so that's what she did. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a really hard day, but um, she made every effort to um, include us. They had a really beautiful ring ceremony after after but it's just it's not the same not the same no yeah but she was wonderful <laughs> yeah, okay. but, well so now you um you said you went to a christian church how did you did you was that a hard decision um, at some point so? no um because i was i just was so hungry for more of jesus and so i i wanted that and Funny thing is, is we had the whole time that we were really active, we'd lived just up the street from that church. And we used to go to the LDS the church that church? was just up the street. Oh. <laughs> and it used to be called Wasatch Church at the time. And I remember thinking, I wonder what kind of weird people go to that yeah. church. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I just researched it online a little bit and I'd seen it as we drive past. And so I just mentioned to my brother one time, because I'd had talks with him, he was a Christian, oh. and asked him if, uh, you know, what kind of a church like what yeah. where he went yeah and at the time he wasn't really going to 
church a lot, but he would said he'd wanted to try that one too. So one day we just went. Oh. We just all went. And my that's brother, Snow my mom. Alpine? And, mm -hmm. okay. Snow Alpine, West Haven. What did you think of that the first time? It was wonderful, but it was different. Yeah. The band. <laughs> was <laughs> There's a band. What about reverence? <laughs> but folded arms. For a them. long time, I would just we kind of sat in the back, and I would just watch people, and just everyone would just seem so happy to be there. They want to be there. Yeah, right? they wanted to be there, and you would see so much emotion and people raising their hands in worship, and it was just fascinating to me. Did you sense that it was all about Jesus? Is that, did yeah, you sense it that? it was wonderful. Because here you're saying that you're searching for Jesus, and yet the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints doesn't seem to no, care that. And just this is what I was saying of, at the very beginning. Jesus is kind of in the background. Yeah. He's at the end of our prepositional phrases or mm -hmm. something. He just isn't the subject. He's there, but he's not the focus. Yeah. Yeah, and it's completely different. Yeah. In Christian um, church, it's like it's all about him. Everything is about him. It's amazing. Just the most important thing, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And John is such a great place to start. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Have you ever met the Wilders then and told I them? I have. <clears throat> did yep. you tell them what, what impact they had I on you? I don't remember if I did or not. I remember waiting in line to have Micah sign a uh, CD yeah. one time, but he was really busy. I don't think I said anything to him, and I've yeah. talked to Lynn a little bit. And we actually so. met at a... We one did. Of their concerts, yeah. didn't we? I yeah. didn't know if you'd. I guess I didn't know your story at that point. Yeah, but. we were very, very fresh out at that point. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah that was I a... talked to you for a little bit, but yeah, yeah, there was a lot of people. Yeah, well, I just think it's, <clears throat> and you've you've told me so many things um, about your journey that are so impactful. I think, and and how you. I don't know why you were thinking the way you, you were willing to think, I guess is the way to say that. Willing to think about the things that didn't seem... Willing to be open. Yeah. Yeah, I just let God needed the truth. Yeah. I just knew I couldn't go back to that religion and not believe it 100%. Even if, you know, if it meant not being with my daughter. Yeah. One thing you brought with you, I think, is, is something that was meaningful that's in the history of the church. Do you want mm -hmm. to share that with us? Yeah. So This is one of the things that really got my wife as well. Yeah, it did <laughs> me too, and it, it really was significant. I found this as I was doing my research and coming out, but it's a, a talk by Joseph Smith, and he's talking to the dissenters in Nauvoo. Yeah. And at one point he says, and I quote, I have more to boast of than ever any man had. I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a whole church together <clears throat> since the days of Adam. A large majority of the whole have stood by me. Neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. I boast that no man ever did such a work as I. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the Latter-day Saints never ran away from me yet. <laughs> and that's in the History of the Church, Volume 6, yeah. pages 408 and 409. <laughs> and that really bothered me because I felt like here's this man that claims to have seen God the Father and Jesus Christ and had numerous angelic visits and he's boasting that he's better than Jesus really bothered me. Yeah, that does sound, it, it bothered my wife too. Yeah. yeah. Is you would think if you saw God face to face, you would be so humble. <laughs> And give you know, him a little credit, maybe. Give him yeah. credit for everything. For everything. Yeah, I mean, just that little experience that I had. Yeah. Man, I just don't understand that at all. <laughs> but, so one other thing that's been very important to you is the Bible. Absolutely. I love the Bible. Isn't it amazing how Mormons carry that to church mm -hmm. every Sunday and there are mm -hmm. little quads and stuff? And yeah. And what, don't, what don't they know about it? So much. Um, there are so many things in there that contradict Mormonism. And really, this has been the standard of truth for over 2,000 years. Right. And I think Mormons a lot of time look at this through the lens of Mormonism instead of, of looking course. at Mormonism through the lens of the Bible, because that's why we have it. That's a good way to the say The standard it. of truth. Yeah. And so if you don't have that, how do you know that what you're believing is right? Everything should have been compared to the Bible. Yes. As Joseph Smith brought forth things, they should have matched yeah. it up against the Bible. And if it doesn't, 
See ya. <laughs> now, now were, you, were you aware of the Dead Sea Scrolls and, and the volume of manuscripts that support the Bible? No. Um, once I started studying the Bible and Jesus got a hold of me, but I still had that little nagging thing in the back <laughs> of my head that it's been corrupted. I don't know if I can believe this. Well, yeah, that's what we're taught. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that's everything. Isn't yeah, it? so I had to research the Bible yeah. and the proof for that <laughs> to make sure I could trust it. And once I did that, all bets were off. <laughs> that amazing. <laughs> yep. Then I was all in, and it was, I studied everything. I mean, how do you make a decision about anything if you don't have all the facts? You have to. Yeah. And the Mormons really miss out on that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and their studying is so, um, I don't want to say superficial, but mm -hmm. it's very... Uh, uh, Cherry-picked. Yeah, There's exactly. just certain verses that yeah. they study, but they don't dig deep. And I don't think they really pay attention to what like Jesus and Paul said, mm -hmm. and even more importantly, what they don't say. Yeah. Where they don't talk about so many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Absolutely. important. Yeah. This is, the Bible is the best. And so, it makes so much sense to so me. So how long has this been for you then? So unofficially, four years. Four years. We were closet Christians for about a year. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so we officially um, left the church July uh, 25th of 2015. We actually came down to a mass exodus that you were doing. Oh, that you were at. At the City Creek mm -hmm. area. Yep, and, and turned in our resignations, my mom, my husband, and myself. Wow. And uh, then, so that was on July 25th. On July 26th, we were baptized. Mm. Some have said that we don't leave the church alone once we've... I've had that said to me many oh, times. I bet you have. <laughs> what do yeah. you, how do we answer that? You know, how do you leave something alone that is leading people away from the God of the Bible. It, and there's people that we love that are involved with this, like, yeah. how can you just walk away and leave them not knowing? Yeah. In fact, in, your, in our status of, of sociability, I guess, we'd be more accepted if we just walked away, yeah. right? If we were just inactive and didn't yeah. live the commandments and... But the thing is, when you get a hold of, when Jesus gets a hold of you like that, you want to shout it from the rooftops. <laughs> well, I think that's it. You do. You do. And, and you want everyone like we... to know. Yeah. It's so amazing. And there's, you have so much to gain by just reading the Bible. So much. It's hard to explain the joy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the freedom. It's hard to put it into words. Yeah. Yeah. And guilt. I mean, the, the guilt. Gone. You, you mentioned something about not being afraid to die. Even. I used to be terrified to die. Did you? I was for a long time, but now I'm that like... That you weren't going to make the celestial kingdom or what? Just, I don't know that I never, I never really believed in you that. I just to get there anyway. <laughs> didn't know what would happen, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but now I know. And you have a trust in Jesus yep. and the Bible. Yep. Oh, that's He's awesome. the only one you can trust. He's the only one righteous enough. Well, I, I, gosh, anything else you want to share? <laughs> you, you had a couple of scriptures. That I do you have some scriptures that. Um, I mean, there's just such a joy and a freedom in this message, and I understand why people think that we can't leave the church alone. But on the other hand, we've we found a joy, and we realize that there's an, there's been an oppression in our lives. Yeah. I mean, you felt guilty, mm -hmm. and you felt, gosh, I don't have a testimony because I'm not worthy enough. Yeah, and you see that so much in Mormonism because you see people trying so hard. Oh yeah. To be perfect, and and when they're not, because we're not, we can't be. <laughs> so it's really hard. It's yeah. really hard, and you blame yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. our fault because we can't, mm -hmm. you know, they don't look at the facts, they don't mm -hmm. think logically. Anyway, share with yeah. us what you have. Um, so this is just one scripture that, that I, when I read it, just got me. <laughs> it says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness, if righteousness could be gained through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Mm. Man. Galatians <laughs> 2.21. Yeah, the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, what would have been, he, he didn't die just to give us the opportunity to work our way to heaven. He died to save us. He took our sin on himself and gave us his righteousness. And all we can do is just say thank you. <laughs> he 
His grace and His yeah. righteousness is what saves us. Yeah, because there's no the, way, no the matter. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're okay. No matter how hard we try or how many good things we do, our works are like filthy rags to Him. That's what the, that's what the Bible says, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's what it says. <laughs> and we just can't earn our way to heaven, and yet. That was mm -hmm. what Mormonism all seemed to be about, was yeah. climbing that ladder. And it's doing... all about what you can do. Yeah, not yeah. what Jesus did. Not no. what Jesus did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's a terrific message. It's a joyful one. And there's such a, again, a freedom that, uh, and now you can face truth. You, mm -hmm. you mentioned something about truth ought to be able to. Yeah, if something's true, it doesn't matter how much you scrutinize it. It's yeah. going to be true. Yeah. And if it can't stand up to that, it's not true. And yet they aren't willing to look at all the... No. no. I think it's fear and a lot of... I mean, you're told. Doubt your doubts. Yeah. You know, don't ask questions. We've already done the thinking. Yeah. And to not to not be willing to, to mm -hmm. search and look and think. Yeah, because, you know... How do I put this into words? <laughs> Um, we all have the right to have all the facts so we can make a good decision because the most important decision we're ever going to make in this life yeah. is the ones we make about God. That's true. Most important decision. And like I was saying before, we kind of had, in Mormonism, kind of have this shallow knowledge. And it's just, it kind of gets repeated. You know, even the lessons that we have are all mm -hmm. topical, you know, and mm -hmm. keeping the, you know, going to the temple worthily and, yeah. Now they don't talk about home teaching anymore, I guess, yeah. but all the different, you know, keep the Sabbath day holy, pay your tithing, and those kind of practical things, mm -hmm. but not so much about Jesus and, yeah. and what he did for us. And Yeah, and really we, it's all about him. It is. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. gosh, Becky, thanks. Anything else? Anything you want to say to your family? Um, I friends? would just say, you know what, if you do nothing else, research the validity of the Bible. Because if you've been lied to about that, what else have you been lied to about? Gosh, that's such a good point. Yeah. And you will never look into a pair of eyes that Jesus does not love. Ever. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you know, if you have um, a willingness to look at the Bible, it, it's not like we're asking people to go off and look at some strange, weird yeah. stuff. This is something it's they the carry Bible. to church every Sunday. Yeah. Even the King James Version. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> well, Becky, so, thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you so you much sharing. for having me and letting me <laughs> cry at your table. <laughs> oh, it's been joyful, and I, I hope I think it will touch some hearts, and hopefully your family will know how sincere we are and, and at least give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. Find out who this we Jesus. Have so much to this gain. Jesus. He's not our brother. He's the creator of all things. He's just so much bigger. <laughs> so much bigger than we so ever much thought. bigger. Yeah. yeah. We love him so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time here on the X One Files. <laughs>